Chapter 12 With Greybeard gone, Tal felt a new sense of emptiness. He spent much of his time drawing mammoths, bison, and rhinos in Greybeard's little cavern. Each evening he stood on top of the cliff, scanning the valley, waiting for the old man to return. As the days passed and Greybeard did not show up, the boy became impatient. Why does he not come back, he thought. He has always kept his word. Maybe something is wrong. He considered going to find him, but he knew he could not cross the river or go into the lands of the other people. Each day the boy waited with growing concern. Then, one morning, down in the slough, Ram growled, and Tao looked up to see Greybeard standing in the middle of the glade as if he had come out of the earth. He had his flint-tipped spear in his hand, and he carried the shoulder blade of a horse strapped to his back. Tao hurried toward him, an expression of joy and relief in his eyes. I am happy to see you, old shaman. It has been a long time. Greybeard nodded. There are many places I must go, and I do not walk as fast as I used to. The old man coughed and passed a shaky hand across his brow. Tao winced as he saw the worn face, the pinched cheekbones. He was worried, but he knew the old man would not want him to show concern. The cave is ready, Tao said, but first you must rest and eat. He took some dried meat and fish from the leather pouch, and they sat with their backs against an old red oak and ate their meal. Tao wondered if Greybeard remembered his promise. When they were finished, they started across the valley. Greybeard stopped many times, poking around the stream beds and gravel banks with the shaft of his spear, searching. Then he found what he was looking for. He picked up a stick and dug out a handful of bright red earth. Here, he said, as he poured it into an empty leather sack, this will make good red paint. Now we must find yellows and whites. I have yellow clay, said Tao. The old man did remember. Good, we can dig up some limestone powder near the foot of the cliffs. That will mix well for the lighter colors. When they had all the red, white, and yellow earth they needed, they went up to the top of the cliff using the easy path that Greybeard had found. They reached the tunnel to the hidden cave and removed the cover of branches to let in the sunlight. In the cave, Greybeard sat on the ground and Tao squatted beside him. The old man poured some of the red earth into one of the saucer-shaped rocks that Tao had collected. Then, using a smooth round stone, he began grinding it into a fine powder. When it was to his liking, he added some of Tao's fish oil, mixing it into a dark red paint. He poured a small amount of this into three other shallow stone dishes. In the first one, he added a lump of yellow clay. In the second, he sprinkled limestone powder. And in the third, he added charcoal dust. Using a small, clean stick for each, he mixed them well, ending with three different colors, a bright orange, a salmon pink, and a dark brown. Tao was amazed. He sat quietly watching. This, too, was magic, he thought. Greybeard spread out more saucers and began blending shades of yellows, browns, grays, and blacks. Some he mixed with honey, and some with the boiled fat and clotted blood from the boar. Next, we must make our brushes, he said. He took a handful of twigs from his pouch and began mashing the ends with a stone until they were soft and ragged. He held one up in the shaft of sunlight beaming through the cave entrance. He turned it around for Tao to see. These are small, he said, for painting eyes and fine lines of hair and fur. He made larger brushes by tying feathers and boar bristles around the ends of long sticks with strings of vegetable fiber. When all the paints and brushes were made, the old man got to his feet. Now, he said, we are ready to paint. Tao held out the shoulder blade of the horse while Greybeard poured spots of the colored paints onto its broad white surface. He handed the boy one of the large brushes and pointed to Tao's pictures of the rhinos, bisons, and mammoths. The boy held his breath. He had never had a brush in his hand before. Which one will I paint? Greybeard smiled. You are the image maker. Paint the one you like the best. The mountain that walks, said Tao. Greybeard nodded. Then begin. Tao hesitated, glancing at the paints on the shoulder blade, uncertain. You saw the mammoths, said Greybeard. What color were they? Reddish brown. Good, said the old man. Then mix a little black with the red until you have the color you wish. Tao dipped his brush into the spot of black, then mixed it with the red. He lifted his hand and touched it to the drawing. It was still too light, so he dipped in another dab of black. Again, his brush touched the drawing. He smiled. It was a deep reddish brown, the color he wanted. He continued to dip and touch. 
Greybeard watched as Dal repeated the motion again and again. He reached out and stopped the boy's hand. You are not painting on an antler or a seashell, he said. You are painting on a wall. Do not dab. Swing the brush with your whole arm. Greybeard took the brush and began sweeping it across the drawing, following the lines of the mammoth's body. Tao saw the old man's face brighten as he worked, laying on great swaths of color. He felt the excitement as the picture came alive. Do not be afraid, said Greybeard, his eyes glowing. You can always go over what you do not like. He gave the brush back to Tao, and the boy tried again. This time he let his arm go free, swinging the brush across the wall. He mixed gray with yellows to fill in the light areas around the chest and the stomach. He painted dark shadows on the shoulders and back to add shading. He saw his mammoth begin to breathe as he filled in the eye and the waving trunk. When the painting was finished, Greybeard cracked open the duck eggs. He separated the yolks and set them aside. He poured the whites into a clean cockle shell, stirring them with a stick, and handed the shell to Tao. The boy was puzzled. What is this for? Spread it over your painting and you will see. With a feather brush, Tao washed the egg white over the picture. This time, the mammoth came alive with bright new colors. He stared at it in surprise. This had been done by his own hand. He smiled. Never had he felt so happy. The following morning, Greybeard went off on his mission of mercy and magic. He was gone for long periods, but he always returned to the little cavern at the top of the cliff to show the boy more about the painting, how to make light and shadows, where to find the red and yellow earth with which to make colors. Sometimes they sat together on the edge of the cliffs talking. Here they looked up at the night sky, and Greybeard pointed out the stars, the first one to appear each night, the one that was red, and the one that always leads toward the north. Here, too, Greybeard showed him how to make fire and told him where to find the special herbs to cure sickness. The last time the old man went off on his journey, Tao and Ram walked with him across the valley. When they reached the river, Greybeard turned. Your drawings are better now. They are true, and they begin to live. Maybe now you can call yourself a cave painter. I thank you for that, said Tao, and for all the things you have taught me. I am happy. The old man smiled. You know the many beautiful things you can make with a brush and a dab of paint. That is all you have to know. That is all that really matters. They said goodbye, and as the old man walked away, Tao heard the long, hacking cough. He noticed the weary, shambling gait. His heart ached, and deep inside, he was afraid for his old friend. <laughs>